Hey guys, welcome to another copy or revision video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at improper integrals. So an improper integral, remember it just either involves a limit being infinity or the um, the integral is undefined at a certain point um, or a certain limit. So, if we take a look at this question here, um, we're looking at exercise 3a, question 1. So if I get the right pen colour. So let's have a go at this question 1a here. So we'll have a go at all three of these. Um, so we're integrating 1 over x cubed between 1 and infinity. So what we do here is we replace infinity with a variable. Um, often we just use t. And then we consider um, doing the integration, substituting in our t and whatever this lower limit is here. And then we just consider what happens as um, the variable t tends to infinity. So let's just start doing this. It'll make hopefully a bit more sense when we start it. So if I'm going to replace this now, and we're taking the limit. So we're doing this for t. So infinity becomes t. OK. 1 over x cubed, remember, that's just x to the minus 3 dx. So now all we need to do is perform this integral like normal. So add 1 to the power divided by the new power. We're going to sub in these limits then, and then we consider as t tends to infinity. So what's that going to look like? Well, that's going to give us the limit as t tends to infinity um, of, add 1 to the power, so that's minus 2 dividing that, dividing by that, so even too quick. So that's minus 2, and then the minus is here. Okay, and this is between 1 and t. And then finally, you just need to consider what happens when you sub these in. So this is going to be the limit as t tends to infinity of minus t, so it's minus t to the minus 2 over 2. And then it would be minus 1 to the minus 2 over 2. But remember, when you're performing an integration like this, you minus off the second part of the second limit. So it's minus of a minus, so it becomes plus. So plus 1 to the minus 2 divided by 2. Okay, so this is just technically 1 over 2 either, either way here. Um, 1 to minus 2 is just 1. So, the only thing we actually have to consider then is what happens as t tends to infinity here, considering this limit. Well, you can test this on your calculator. You don't have to kind of like memorize this idea. Um, so it's minus a very, very large number to the minus 2 here, um, because obviously we can't treat this as a number, because infinity isn't a number, it's a concept. So, just put a large number in here for t, raise it to the minus 2 and see what happens. And what you should find basically is that this becomes 0. Okay, So as t tends to infinity, this part here tends to 0. So what we just get left with is 0 plus a half and therefore our integral here is equal to a half. So it converges and that's the value. So let's have a go at part b, a very similar integral. Um, so again we've just got this limit of, in of infinity on the upper limit, 2, so it's x to the minus 3 over 2. Exact same process here, I'm going to change my upper limit, because that's where infinity is, to t. I'm going to take the limit as t tends to infinity, and we replace my lower limit here with what we've got here too. Okay, so I'm not replacing it with anything, don't know why I said that. Uh, well, let's perform the integral, so this is x to the minus 3 over 2 dx. So you'd add 1 to your power, divide by the new power. So the limit here as t tends to infinity, what's that going to be? So if you add 1 to the power, that could be minus um, 1 over 2. And you divide by minus 1 over 2. So what you're just going to get left with is, you can take the 2 on top, so it's going to be minus 2x to the minus a half um, between 2 and t. OK. And at this stage here, all you need to do now is put in these limits, um, t and 2. So, exact same idea. Um, so we're going to plug in minus 2 lots of t to the minus a half. So minus 2 lots of t to the minus a half. So it'd be minus here, 2, um, times 2 to the minus a half. But because it's minus of a minus, we add this on. So it's going to be plus... 2 times 2 um, to the minus a half, like so. 
So now all we need to consider here is which I've the bit I've missed off is what happens here as t tends to infinity. So I'll probably do that again throughout the video. I always forget doing it with these questions. Well, plug this in on your calculator again. Um, just put a large number in here for t. See what happens. And again, what you should find is that this tends to zero here. This is zero plus two times two to the minus a half. So what you get there is root two. So our final answer for this integral again, which diverges, uh, sorry, converges, is root two there. Okay. And then finally, let's have a look at part C here. So this one is involving E. But exact same method, yeah, again. E to the minus 3x dx. So we're going to take the limit here. As t tends to infinity. Um, and obviously, we've just got to place this upper limit here of t. So it's of e to the minus 3x dx. So integrating an exponential here, consider the derivative, and then we divide by that derivative. So what we've got here now is the limit as t tends to infinity of minus e to the minus 3x divided by 3. Okay. And this is between 0 and t here. So in other words, what we've now got is minus, so let me try that then before I forget it, the limit as t tends to infinity again of minus e to the minus 3t, so we're just replacing wherever x is with a t, divided by 3. Um, if x is 0, so that's minus 3 times 0, so that's 0, so this would be minus um, e to the 0, so that's, that, well that's just going to be 1, so it's minus a third, but remember it's minus minus a third, so it becomes plus 1 over 3, or plus a third. So now, all we need to do is work this out individually. So, what would happen here? And again, it's pretty common, this will just tend to zero. So if you put a very large number in here for t, you'll find this comes to zero. So zero plus a third here, just giving us a third for the value of the integral. So like you can see, they're all pretty similar. Um, the method is usually the exact same for all of them. The only thing that can sometimes vary is that it's the lower limit, which contains um, minus infinity, for example. So again, just bear that in mind. We picked out a couple of like exam questions here. So we've got to find the integral of 1 over um, 7 minus 3x all squared. And then we're going to try and compute this um, improper integral for part b. So let's have a go at this. Question 5 here. 7 minus 3x squared dx. So I think the easiest way to do this would just be to use substitution. So, if we say u is equal to um, 7 minus 3x, obviously we're going to have to change the, the variable of integration here, so we need to find out what dx is, so du would be minus 3 dx, so therefore dx is um, du divided by minus 3, like so. Okay, so let's have a go at computing this integral now. So now, using our substitution, this is the integral of 1 over, so that's u, and we square it, so u squared. dx, where dx is du, divided by minus 3, like so. So what I could do here is take out this minus 1 over 3 here to the, the front of the integral, using linearity, so this is minus a third of the integral of 1 over u squared du. And now at this point here, this is um, you know, a fairly standard integral. So to perform the integration here, so this is u to the minus 2, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So what I'm going to get is minus 1 over 3 times minus 1 over u. Okay. And then obviously don't forget, we will have the constant of integration. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to times this through here and then add my constant of integration on at the end. So, minus 1 over 3 times minus 1 over u, that's going to give me 1 over 3u. The negatives are just going to cancel here. We need our constant of integration. But be careful, 
this isn't your final answer, remember you need to now resubstitute back in here using u equals 7 minus 3x. So therefore, this is equal to 1 over 3 lots of 7 minus 3x plus c. Okay, so that's part A there. So that's our final result there. And then in part B, we just want to show that the integral here that we just, com just computed between minus infinity to 2 converges and to find its value. So let's have a go at this. So if I clear it just so we've got enough room, um, we should be okay. So 5b here. So we've already computed the integral um, without limits, so we can just use that fact now. So what we want to find here, um, so let me try it before I forget, because I'm going to do it again. So it's the limit as t tends to infinity, sorry, minus infinity. Don't forget, it's the lower limit this time, so it's minus infinity, of 1 over 3 lots of 7 minus 3x. Okay. t is the lower limit here because it's the lower limit on the integral they've given us, so it's 2 and uh, t, like so. And now at this stage here, all you need to do is sub these values in. So if you put 2 into here, that's going to be 1 over 3 times 7 minus 3 times 2, which is 6, so that's 7 minus 6, which is 1, so we get a third. Let's just write this down before I forget. So it's a third minus put t in, so it's just this with t instead. Like so. And now, all we need to do is consider what happens as t tends to minus infinity. I keep forgetting that. So, consider a very, very small, uh, a very, very large negative number here. So, what would that give us? This will just cancel again. Well, it won't cancel, sorry, it'll be, be zero. It's going to tend to zero. So all we get left with here is a third. Okay. So it converges. So therefore it converges. And that's the value. Okay. So this is the value. Just to make it clear. Okay. And then let's move on to the very final question here. Again, exercise 3a, question 7. So we want to find the integral of ln x divided by x dx. So, again, I think the best way to do it is just use substitution. So, if we say u is equal to um, ln x, Again, we're going to need to replace the, the variable here that we're integrating with. So we need to work out dx. So to do that, let's work out du. So with du, that would just be simply 1 over x dx. So in other words, dx is just um, du divided by 1 over x. So that's du divided by 1 over x, so that's x du. Okay. So now, we can replace our integral here, we can use the substitution. So this is u divided by x, and then dx, where dx is x du, like so. The x is just going to cancel here, so all we're actually going to get left with is the integral of u du, and obviously this is a nice straightforward integration. So this is going to give me now, um, add 1 to the power, so that's u squared, divided by 2, and then we just add on C. So I don't really know why I'm doing this in, bra in square brackets um, because that's just our final answer there. Well, very close to the final answer. With it being substitution, just make sure you substitute back in. So U is ln x, so this is ln x squared. Okay, divided by 2, we add on C there. Okay, so that is, now that is the final answer, so I'm just testing you. Part B is a hence question, so we're going to use this here. Um, to calculate part B. It'd be stupid if you didn't. So, part B, we're finding um, from 1 to infinity this integration that we just worked out. So, essentially, that was just 
uh, Linux squared divided by 2. Okay. So I'll make a mess of this. Let me just redo it. Let me redo it. <laughs> so we've already done the integration. The integration comes out as Linux squared over 2 between. So it's 1 to infinity. So remember, we take the limit here. Is your variable, usually t, tends to infinity. So t is my upper limit here, because it's positive infinity. And now again, we just need to consider what happens here. Now, this is a question where you have to show that it's divergent. So what that means is we have a bit of an issue somewhere. And this is usually often the case when you have lun. So what happens here, well, what we end up with is the limit as t tends to infinity. So if you think about summing these limits in, so it's the limit as t tends to infinity, of lun t of squared divided by 2. Okay, lun 1 obviously is 0, so that the other part is just going to come to 0. So, what's the difficulty here? Well, as t tends to infinity, lun t also tends to infinity. So, let's write that down. So, as lun t tends to infinity, as t tends to infinity. What that means is that the integral is divergent. And we have a bit of an issue because we can't actually work out the value. So there we go. The integral is divergent because um, ln t tends to infinity as t tends to infinity there. So that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully a bit of a short one. Um, it's not a massive topic. So it's just part of chapter three, methods in calculus. Um, if there's any mistakes, which there probably is, because I seem to be not on it today, um, please just let me know down below.